Hello and welcome back to another episode of Grounded. Today we are talking about the phases of migraine. The phases of migraine are important to understand because when we're talking about vestibular migraine, a lot of times people are like, well, I feel symptomatic all the time. And that is very possible with VM. It's also possible with triple PD and getting that straight is super important, but also knowing what phase you're in in order to treat is vital. Now, of course, this is going to take some practice, some time, and probably a little bit of tracking. And I want to say up front that you should not usually track for more than six to eight weeks, especially if you're a person who tends towards hypervigilance. So that is just going to be something that you know about you that you are going to kind of be like, hey, you know what? I'm a person who gets a little bit obsessive about things and that's all I can think about. That's usually not the person that I recommend track long term. Some people like to track long term. Everyone has a different way of tracking. Some people use Migraine Buddy. I have no affiliation with them. I just know people like it. Some people use the stoplight, which is like a red is a bad, a really bad day. A yellow is like an average kind of mediocre day, but I can still do stuff. And a green is like, for me, this is my best kind of day. So it's going to be super, super person dependent. And of course, it's going to be up to you whether or not you track, whether or not what that looks like for you and what system you use to do tracking. Now, we have to remember that migraine is a 24-7, 365 disorder. Vestibular migraine is a form of migraine and migraine is a spectrum disorder. This means that you can have symptoms of head pain and light sensitivity and let's say ocular symptoms where like you see flashing in your eyes, which is an aura, or maybe you go blind for 45 minutes, which is a form of aura. These things can all happen. When you also have migraine on the other side of the spectrum, what does that mean? That means you can have symptoms like dizziness and imbalance. The floor is dropping out from under you. You feel like you're walking on a trampoline. You have sinus pressure. You feel like you're really stuffy. All of these things are also migraine symptoms, but just a different kind of symptom, which gets really confusing. So again, it's the exact same disorder. It just looks a little bit different for everyone. And it's really, really, really important to understand this because migraine is migraine is migraine and it lives in your brain 24-7, 365. Just like I said before, it's a chronic disorder. And this is sort of like someone with ep epilepsy has seizures, right? This doesn't mean they have seizures every single day, all the time, all day, every day but they do live with epilepsy all the time, all day, every day. And there's a difference between those two things. Do you see it sort of, again, I can make another comparison, like a person who has asthma, they always have asthma, but the attacks come in asthma attacks. Now the language behind migraine got a little bit confused a while ago and I have a headache became migraine, which not migraine is not just a headache, or even required requiring headache, it can just be non-head pain symptoms with other migrainous symptoms. So light and sound sensitivity with dizziness, for instance, is a form of migraine attack. And this gets really confusing because people are like, I thought migraine was head pain. Head pain is not a requirement. And this is where tracking also comes in handy. So if you are having no symptoms or not attack-like symptoms, you are in the interictal phase. And this means between attacks, I believe in Latin. I definitely did not take Latin in high school or college for that matter. So I don't take that to the bank, but I'm pretty sure that's what it means. So interictal means between attacks. The attack itself comes in four distinct phases. So interictal is kind of like that fifth that means between attacks. And you can skip this phase entirely for some people who are having really high frequency migraine. And for some people, this is really extended. So the first thing is prodrome. Prodrome is the symptoms prior to the migraine attack. It happens to about two thirds of people. Of course, not everyone has prodrome, but most people and most of my patients have prodrome. And once they figure out what it is, it changes their life. Prodrome can be anything from feeling like you really need to go pee really more frequently than normal. It can be increased neck and head pain. It can be sinus pressure. It can be uh, my dizziness feels a little bit worse all of a sudden. It can be I'm having these drop attack kind of symptoms where everything, I guess I shouldn't say drop attack, that's a different thing, but where everything feels like it's falling out from under me all of a sudden. That can also be a form of prodrome. So this is where tracking what your symptoms feel like on a regular basis, because this can happen 
up to 48 hours before your attack. It can be food cravings. It can be so many things. So a lot of people say, and again, there are some people who are going to have chocolate as a food trigger. I do not want to negate that. But for a lot of people, food triggers like chocolate cravings, for example, are actually prodrome food cravings. So the best time to treat an attack is during your prodrome. So if you can catch the attack during that time, and you know, for example, I get chocolate cravings and increased urinary frequency, take your rescue medication then. Everyone needs a rescue medication. Everyone, everyone, it is really important, or at least a rescue plan, because attacks untreated can lead to increased chronicity of migraine. So you do need an acute medication. Definitely advocate for yourself on that one. It's going to take maybe some trial and error to determine which one and which kind is right for you. But prodrome is an important thing to understand. Again, it can happen up to 24 to 48 hours before the actual attack. So if on a Wednesday morning, you're having these like weird dropping sensation and some neck pain, and then on Friday, you get a full on migraine attack, That was your prodrome on Wednesday. And it can be really hard to find these patterns if you're not writing them down. So I really recommend you write them down. Next is aura. Only about a third of people have aura. They can be motor and they can be sensory. They can be, I lose my vision in one or both eyes. It can be, I see something like a flashing or rainbows or something like that in my eyes. It could be you have numbness or tingling in one of your limbs or in the side of your face. It could be a lot of different things. And so understanding that aura only usually lasts 45 minutes to an hour. Anything longer than that is considered extended aura. And the types of medications you can take actually change. So understanding that is also very, very, very important. So make sure you're talking to your neurologist headache specialist about all of these things. After the aura is the attack phase. Everyone has the attack phase, unless of course you've treated it with your rescue medication during the prodrome, and then hopefully you don't get into the attack phase. But the attack phase is the most severe time. If you're thinking about this like head pain migraine, it's usually when the head pain and light sensitivity and the sound sensitivity, the nausea, things like that are the worst. And this usually lasts between up to 72 hours, hopefully not longer than that. If you were having symptoms of this for more than 72 hours, like the most intense migraine attack symptoms, the room is spinning and I'm feeling really imbalanced, I can barely get out of bed, that sort of symptoms, that is... when you are in status migranosis and you need to go to the ER, the emergency department, or call your neurologist. If you are a person who is frequently in status migranosis, that is the time to really develop a plan with your doctor ahead of time. If you're like, this happens to me all the time, so that you can hand it directly to the emergency department physician and say, hey, this is what me and my doctor decided beforehand. This is what we're doing. Your doctor's signature typically is on it so they know, and then they will be able to administer you that very specific plan of care. So super, super important. Do not forget to do that. It is absolutely vital to understand that being in status migranosis needs to be treated usually more aggressively. A lot of people will need like a steroid taper or some IV something. It really is going to be person dependent. So deciding on what you need before you need it so that no one's like rushing around trying to figure out what you need. I mean, of course, the first time this happens, this might just happen and that's no fun at all. But if it continues to happen, you need to have a plan of attack literally with your doctor. After that is post-drome. So prodrome, aura, attack, post-drome. Post-drome is after the attack. There is a very small subset of people who say that this feels like they are a new person. Like, I feel so much better. I feel fantastic. It's a new day, blah, blah, blah. That is the small subset of people. The majority of people feel hungover without the party. Like I just feel exhausted and fatigued and tired and crappy and my head kind of hurts and I'm a little bit light sensitive, things like that. That is post-drome. That is after the attack. Take care of yourself during this time. I'm not kidding you. This is not the time to like go do a crazy hit workout and like run 27,000 errands. No, no. This is the time to make sure you're getting enough protein in your diet, eating a bunch of water, taking your electrolytes, doing the things that you feel like are supportive to your body. This is what to do during the post drum because it is, it's sort of like a hangover and it needs to be taken care of. Your body needs to be given a little bit of love. And this can last up to 42 
42, 24 to 48 hours as well. And so this whole thing can last a really long time. So if you have high frequency chronic migraine, you're having many, many, many attacks a month, this can like kind of always be in part of this cycle. And if you have pretty episodic migraine or vestibular migraine, this might be where like once or twice a year, I get one of these attacks. And then as I get um, in between those attacks, you would be an interictal. So again, you can be an interictal or you could be in prodrome aura, attack, or postdrome. We go over this in way more depth, when to treat, how to treat it, what to treat it with, what your toolkit should look like, all of those things in vestibular group fit. So if you're having trouble managing your migraine attacks and your vestibular migraine disorder, this is the place to be. I will tell you all of the things that you need to know in order to manage a vestibular migraine. Truly, it is the most comprehensive, holistic, well-rounded program for a person with migraine. If you need help managing your migraine disorder, I will help you get there. People get so much better. They go to the grocery store again, drive their kids to school again, are able to return to work and so much more. So I will see you there. Join us at the link below. I love you and I'll see you next time on Grounded. Mm -hmm.